All right. Welcome to the Roofer Report. I am your host, Pete McKendrick, uh, here with Roofer. And uh, very excited today uh, about my guest, uh, Matt, and with Hail Trace. Uh, very happy to have you, Matt. Very excited to, to have you guys on. This is a great uh, opportunity for us to have a conversation about a, a really great topic, you know, one that I, I really enjoy. I think this is a very interesting piece of our, our industry and our business. And, uh, you know, I'll give you a second here to just kind of introduce yourself and what uh, Hail Trace is all about. If, in case there's anybody out there at this point that doesn't know what you guys do, I think everybody's pretty familiar with you. But just in case, you know, we got some newcomers, maybe they, uh, you know, want to know what you guys got going on over there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people who have not heard of Hail Trace. So <laughs> uh, we're, we're, uh, we're not naive to that. Uh, so my name is Matt Grassmeyer. I'm the director of operations here at Hail Trace, and we are a weather forensics technology company. And basically, we help um, companies find areas impacted by severe weather. We focus on hail and wind, um, and the two, you know, the, the two catastrophic types of weather that that cause um, property damage. Um, in the restoration industry. And so we just help people find those areas. Um, we, we do a lot. Most, most of our clients are roofing contractors. Um, so we do a lot of strategy um, uh, planning with it, with our contractors and uh, just try to help them, you know, get as much out of weather data as they possibly can. Yeah. Speak a little bit to your guys' platform. You know, uh, obviously there's, there's a little bit more to it, I guess, at this point, right. Than just, you know, making some predictions on the weather. I mean, obviously you guys are generating reports. You've become an industry standard, I think from the insurance standpoint of, you know, helping uh, with insurance jobs and that data being a huge part of that, that piece. So speak a little bit to just like everything that you guys have going on and how that's, that can really benefit a contractor. Well, I think we're, we're part of a larger kind of shift in mindset in the industry. And I, I don't think our industry is quite there yet, but, you know, we, we do offer weather data. We do try to do as, as much predicting as we possibly can, but we really, we really excel in on the forensic side of the weather data. Um, one of that pieces or one of the pieces on that is creating um, maps that indicate areas impacted by hail. So we have a team of, um, five meteorologists that create all of our maps, they hand draw them, they, they're scrutinizing everything and they're looking at live radar data feeds and they're really trying to be as specific and as detailed as possible as they create these, I guess you'd call them geo shapes uh, overlaid on top of a, like a, a map um, that just indicates areas that have uh, been impacted by severe weather. Um, the other side of the forensics piece is going back and looking at like site specific um, weather data. So when when you're saying um, the insurance um, side of things and, and insurance claims and and um, property um, damage assessments, um, really most of the time, if not all the time, like a property that that has been assessed as damage. Um, there has to be some sort of date associated with the date of loss, right? So we, we excel in helping um, companies or individuals find that specific date of loss. Um, and so, you know, if you take any address, you know, for example, like if I took this address here where we're at in Edmond, Oklahoma, I could, I could have our team of meteorologists go um, back and find some dates. Um, we could pinpoint some dates that we know it hailed and then they could like take like a fine tooth comb and really um, get down on a micro level to, to see whether or not this address was was impacted by hail on a specific date. Now, a lot of times people think that that means that that damage occurred, um, and that's that's really not it. We we kind of pride ourselves on hey, we stay in our lane of weather. We know the weather data, and we know what that does. As far as the other stuff, like we'll leave that to somebody else. We'll leave that to the engineers. We'll leave that to the, to the lawyers. We'll leave that to the roofing contractors to, to, to decide whether or not the date that we give them is what actually caused um, the damage. So we, you know, we don't, we don't say damage. We don't, we don't call our maps damage map. I think that's, a, that's an important um, distinction to make there is we really yeah. just help people find uh, good weather data. 
Yeah, nice. And I think that's, a, you know, like you said, that's a big distinction to make is that you're just a piece of the puzzle, right, of all of this and that you're 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 giving them the data to go to bat with. But there's still a lot that goes into that to determine the actual, you know, uh, level of the damage and things like that. So from that, let's roll into 2021, right? Like we uh, one of the things that I know I really enjoyed in 2021 was the daily hail trace, uh, hail trace uh, forecasts on Facebook. You know, I like to get on there and see what was going on. And, you know, obviously from a roofer standpoint uh, here, you know, a lot of our uh, reports that are pulled uh, are based around storms, you know, are, you know, so it, we watch that data closely so that we're able to, you know, really jump in there and help uh, as best we can when uh, a situation presents itself, like what happened in Louisiana uh, earlier this year. But, you know, so speak a little bit, I guess, to, to 2021 and how you guys saw it shape up in comparison to previous years and, you know, uh, maybe some statistics of like how it went down. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think from from an overall standpoint, I think if you were to ask, uh, you know, the roofing contractors and, you know, companies that work in the restoration air industry and, you know, specifically work with, with severe weather, uh, I, I think a lot of people would say that they were disappointed in the year. Um, and I, you know, I think, I think it kind of played out kind of exactly how we thought it would, um, not a crazy active year, but, you know, pretty active to, to, to date, we've had, uh, I've got some stats here. I'll pull up for you. We've got, to date, we've had um, 3,650 reports of hail um, this year. Um, and, and for a reference point, all of 2020, we had um, just under 4,600, so 4,581. Um, 2019, just over 5,300 or almost 5,400. And then 2017, a lot of people remember 2017. That was a really good hail season. Um, that year we had 6,045 hell reports. So we're kind of, you know, it's, it's November, so we still got a little bit left. We're kind of, we're kind of meandering out of severe weather, um, season from a hail standpoint, but yeah, I mean, average to slightly below average is what I would say. Again, I'm not a meteorologist, so our, our meteorologist could probably speak more to that, but I, I think we're, we're probably right there a little bit below average, but, um, What's interesting about it is like that, like we had we had some good storms. Like we we rate all of our storms. Uh, for those that don't know how we, we rate our storms, we rate them from a, a on a one to a five star impact rating. One for reference point, one star would be like you know the, the middle of nowhere Montana getting quarter size hail, which is just <laughs> one inch hail. Um, as opposed to five star, that's our highest rated storm. A five star would be like the Dallas Metro or the Denver Metro uh, getting like golf balls or ping balls to up to tennis ball size hail that's like a or tennis ball and, and bigger um that would be considered a five star um hail event and this year uh we had uh looks like we had six five star uh hail events um so a couple of four in texas one in oklahoma and then one in iowa so texas they really do get a, a lot of uh, of the bigger hailstorms, a lot of that is because of the huge population centers there. Um, but then they, they also are, you know, kind of in the area that does get a lot of hit. So um, I think overall is a pretty good year. There's there's plenty of work out there to be done, and sure. we have customers that are, you know, being very successful with what has happened this year. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's been a pretty good year uh, from a weather standpoint. Um, yeah, <laughs> all that good. Been a pretty good year, I think. Yeah, no, no. I think, uh, you know, just following what you guys have tracked and just seeing it on Facebook and, and knowing, you know, the influx of reporting that we've seen, uh, you know, a request for reports. I think that it's, you know, obviously it was a decent year. Like you said, there's plenty of work out there. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it was enough to to generate a substantial amount of work. And, uh, you know, I think that overall it was a pretty good, a pretty good year for anybody that's in that storm restoration field. Um, so, I want to shift gears a little bit here though. And, you know, we're talking about storms. We're talking about how you guys are reporting all that forensic data, but let's talk about, you know, like you, you mentioned seasons winding down, right? Like we're kind of getting to the end of that storm season, right? I'm a storm restoration contractor. Let's say, you know, what is the rest of my year, right? Like, am I sitting on the couch now? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so what, what am I doing? Right. Uh, am I prepping for 2022? Uh, obviously there's plenty of time to do that at this point, right? Uh, as long as I don't procrastinate, right? 
But uh, let's speak to that a little bit because you and I had a conversation a little bit ago, and uh, this is a topic that I think we both really enjoy talking about is, uh, you know, what can you do in the off season to really set yourself up for success? And I think that you had some great insight into, you know, Hey, you've got this data, you know, just because it's not storm season doesn't mean that you can't still get leads and you can't still work those leads. Uh, you know, so what are some ideas that you guys have there to kind of keep your, your storm contractors rolling through the off season? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. And I, I, I think we could probably, the two of us, I think could probably talk about this for, for several hours. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm passionate about and Caltrace is passionate about as well. And I think there, there's other, there's other industry vendors that are, that are pretty passionate about it too. I think, I think it, and it kind of, you know, going back to the mindset shift, I think, you know, when I came into the industry, I'm, I'm just, I've just been in this industry for, for uh, a little over five years. Um, you know, there's some, there's some contractors and some, you know, companies that will, they'll, they'll literally just work for a few months of the year. And then after a certain point, they'll just shut it down. And some of them really do just sit on their couch and wait, um, or they have other jobs or they're not fully invested into their company. They might own a roofing company. They might have their friend help them out, but then they also, you know, they also have a side hustle or they call their roofing company a side hustle. And, you know, I, I think that's all fine. But if you, if you want to be successful in the roofing industry, I think it, it, comes with a mindset shift and you have to jump all in. And there's several ways to do that. One, I think calling it the off season is kind of, is kind of weird. Like, because like we've learned, like there really isn't an off season. So that's one way to look at it. I mean, in terms of like athletics, I think off season is a great way to look at it because like, you know, everybody who's ever played sports, like their coaches probably said at least a thousand times to them, like championships are won in the off season. And that's true in real life too. So like what we do right now can really set us up for success or, you know, in some cases failure in, you know, 2022. So like we're, we're not really in active hail season. Uh, Oklahoma doesn't know that October was really active. You know, our, the joke around the office was Maytober. Um, here in Oklahoma, we had, you know, quite the active uh, weather weather uh, last month. Um, and we, we might have some more weather um, coming up this week as well. Not necessarily here, but, you know, just around the United States, we, we might have some some active weather um, happening. So just goes to show, like, it doesn't, doesn't matter what time of year it is. It doesn't have to be March for there to be severe weather because, I mean, weather doesn't really care whether, <laughs> you, know, if, you know, between the, the predetermined start of hail season and end of hail season. But I think the mindset shift is we can, we can generate revenue using weather data all year round. Um, one of the things that we recommend that our companies or that our customers do is um, what I call the client audit. So like, and, and that we could, again, we could speak about this for hours, but I think, I think a lot of customers of ours and a lot of companies in the industry, they start over every year, like at the at January one, they start over, they start from scratch, they, they, they consider themselves having zero customers. And while that, I guess that's kind of true because we're not like a cable company selling, some, some, selling somebody a monthly subscription service, um, it's, not, it's not the whole picture. Like I, I think a lot of companies do themselves a disservice by not paying attention to their past customers and not you know, facilitating good relationships with them. And a really easy way to do that is to do a client audit a couple times a year. Like if you, a bunch of your clients get impacted by hail in March, in November, why don't we go ahead and do a client audit and just use the technology that's available. You can do all those things in HailTrace. You could do those things in, in multiple different platforms. Um, it doesn't have to be HailTrace. I prefer that it, that it would be, obviously, because <laughs> I'm a little biased, but if you take all of your clients and you put them in a system like HailTrace and then we, we, can, we can show you how to pull out a report that gives you a list of all of your customers and their most recent date of loss. Then we can look at that and say, okay, let's, okay, we, we've got a hundred that have been impacted this year. I know we built roofs for 50 of them. That leaves 50 solid warm leads that we, that we have access to right now that we can at least start a conversation with. And, you know, a lot of times that conversation goes like, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, like, thanks for being a valued client of, ABC roofing company looks like you guys were impacted in April. You know, we're just making sure that we service all of our, all of our clients and we just want to make sure that everything's okay with your roof. We'd love to come out and, and do a free inspection to make sure everything's okay. 
or come up into, into winter weather, we want to make sure that your roof is ready for the winter. Um, let's make sure that hail didn't damage your roof. And if it did, we can help you take care of that. And then you, you go from there. Like, so like that proactive stance, I think goes a long way. Um, because chances are most people don't remember who their roofer was from two years ago. Most people probably don't even remember who their roofer was six months ago. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like we hear all the time, like, Oh, my customers will call me. My customers will call me if they get with hail one, there's a good chance they don't remember you. Number two, I mean, how many of your customers actually know when they get hit with hail? Um, it, here's a, a, a great story to, to, to show the, to showcase just the lack of knowledge, just across the board. Um, 2020, everybody's stuck at home, right? Like we all, everybody around the United States had that stay at home, like two weeks to slow the spread. Everybody's at home. Well, right here in Oklahoma, we had a pretty significant hailstorm roll right through Oklahoma. Everybody, every, literally everybody was at home. And 90% of the people that were at home had no idea that their roof was impacted by hail and they were home. So like you take that to its logical conclusion. If people don't even know that their, that their roof got hail when they were home, how many of those people do you think have no idea that their roof was hit with hail when they weren't home? So it's just not something that a lot of people think about. And in, like, I would argue that most people probably don't think about hail on their roof until they've got a leak. Most people know, right. okay, my car, okay, my car looks dinged up, but that's something you look at every day. The average Joe is not going outside in the morning and, and looking up at the roof. Man, yeah. I wonder if that got hail damage recently. No, <laughs> nobody does that. So, yeah, it, like, I don't even, I don't even know who the last roofer that replaced my roof was. Um, this was six or seven years ago. But like, and I, and I like look at that type of stuff. That's not to say everybody doesn't, but it's just a, it's just a harder thing to keep track of because it's not, it's not something that you're actively thinking about all the time. So having, I say all that to say, all, all that long-winded um, <laughs> word to say, keeping track of your existing client base and making sure that you're taking care of them by doing things like a client audit and saying, okay, we've got a hundred clients. Let's see how many of them were impacted by hail this year. If we did 70 of those roofs, awesome. We're, we're, we're good. Let's go out and make sure, hey, we just, we're coming by to just make sure everything is still okay with that roof that we put on because we, you know, stand behind our work and we do a good job. We just want to make sure that everything's okay. Um, another way to, to do that is just to reach out to your customers just in general. And don't like, you can, you can just reach out to them and say, hey, we value you as a customer. We want to make sure that we're taking care of you all the time. Like we're, we're going to come do some free stuff for you. Um, we have a lot of customers that do like winterization type of stuff for free. Cause not, 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 not a lot of it costs a lot of money, right? Like you can go out and do an inspection and it doesn't take a lot of time. doesn't take a lot of money. Um, and if you're working it right, like you do one customer and then you go knock on you know, the, the doors around, you know, they, uh, I think a lot of companies call it the six pack where you start at one house and then you kind of go out and you knock on the other doors around in that area. And then you use that customer as the reference point, right? Like, Hey, we're just on Mr. And Mrs. Smith's roof, you know, just doing our, our free, you know, by, by annual or, you know, twice a year inspection, however you want to call that. And we just thought we'd, they, they mentioned that you might, you might need some, somebody to look at their roof or that you might enjoy, uh, like, appreciate somebody to come look at their roof you know there's there's lots of ways to to do that um but taking care of your your active clients um i think is is a huge part of that um and then like as it's november right we're, we everybody's going into the winter season like go out and and do that type of stuff go offer those those things and you'd be surprised how many of our customers will go and they'll offer like some winterization program and then they'll find damage on roofs that, you know, they thought, yeah, but they, they got like, you know, quarter size hail, probably fine. And, and then they go out there and they're like, oh, man, we should have come out here. Um, and so doing things like that um, can really set yourself up for success with your own clients. Now, that's just with your own clients. The other part of that is, hey, let's take a look back at the year in general. 
like let's get into hail trace let's look at how many storms were in our area let's let's set it let's set our uh, like a perimeter right like i know my office is right here I, we work about a 50 mile radius of our office let's let's look for all the storms that happened this year within a 50 mile radius of our office you you would be shocked at how many how many storms you may have missed um, the best example that i can come up with of that is a couple years ago um I was we, we were doing this uh, road show um, around the country with some other companies and we were in St. Louis and I got up and I, I had a chance to speak and kind of some similar things to what we're talking about today. And I asked the question, um, do you guys know how many storms you guys had last year? Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think I think I framed it like, how was your guys' hail season last year? And everybody in the room was like, oh, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. We like there was no storms, like there wasn't a lot to do. And I was like, you guys, you guys know how many storms you had? within 30 miles of, of this point right here and I, the majority of the, the people were like maybe one two storms they had like eight they had like eight pretty significant storms happened within their area and they were shocked and i think a lot of that is because we we get our we put our head down we go to work we're doing what we got to do we're doing the jobs that we're building out right now because one storm happens we jump on that we go 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 and then november hits and we're like all right what's happening next year. And we may have missed three or four other storms that we just really weren't paying attention to because we had enough stuff going on from that one specific thing, right? So another thing we do is just a storm audit. Let's do a storm audit. All the, all the storms that happened in your area, we're, we're pretty much past all the active weather right now, right? So let's, let's go look at, at all the storms that have happened in our area. So that's, that's another way to get in there. And so like, then you just, you just kind of have a, a better understanding of, of what's going on in your area. And again, I think people would be surprised how many storms happen in their specific area that they work. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, a, a, this, the, the last thing I'll say on this is, um, cause we could probably just go, go for hours and hours on this. Uh, <laughs> what we call like, uh, we, we call it finding the honey hole. Um, so you, you go and you look at all the storms in your area and then you look for the, for the ones that were, you know, maybe, maybe not as, as well publicized, maybe not as well hyped, like some of the smaller storms, let's say some pockets of, you know, quarter size hail, let's say, where it just wasn't a huge storm and probably nobody even looked at it. Um, we love telling stories as I've told a couple stories here. This is one of my favorite stories that I ever get to tell. And this happened right here in Oklahoma city, 2017. We had a storm in August and it dropped like isolated quarters, maybe some half dollars. Um, every roofer in the state kind of just didn't really pay attention to it because it was August. It, the, the season was over. Everybody's kind of twiddling their thumbs or, you know, sitting on the couch, just getting ready for the next year. Well, we had a client that utilized that storm as a new hail day to find roofs that had been uh, damaged by previous storms. Um, so they found, you know, some three, four year old stuff that just hadn't been taken care of. And, but now they had, you know, significant enough hail to, to justify a new hail date. And they were, able to, they were able to do, I think, 60 roofs in the month of November alone, wow. um, which that's, that's almost unheard of. Um, and, and just, it, that's not, that's not, you know, the average result, like nobody that comes in here, <laughs> people think like, oh, we're jumping to Hill Trace and we're going to get 60 roofs this month. Um, but that is that is something that is possible, and and all it takes is a look, and being willing to 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 do some legwork and be do, willing to do some research to get yourself out there, um, and utilizing the data at hand. Um, so we've got the weather data, we've got your data, and then we've got you know like leads data. We we utilize a a, a data service that that allows you to click on a house and see you know the the occupants information. Um, so those those types of marketing things are are, are readily available. Um, you just have to do a little bit of work to, to utilize them. And we really think that you can generate or generate revenue 365 days a year. Sorry, I just blew you No, up. no, I mean, I, I kind of let you go because you were going good. There. No, I just, just to add to that, you know, I think the key point in this is, you know, get a little creative, right? Like you, you've got the information there, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of the piggyback off of what you said, like you have all this forensic data of, you know, storm information and your past customers, you know, like if they're, if they're past customers, let's talk about that really quick. You know, if they're customers that I've done work for, like for instance, in roofer, 
you've most likely pulled a report. You already have the roof measurements, right? Like oh, how yeah. easy would it be to quote something else? Like, you know, uh, maybe a gutter install, or like you said, exactly. maybe go back and do an inspection and you already know how big that roof is. You already know what you're getting into. You've got all that information. So now you've got storm data on that house. You've got, you know, a roof measurement already done. Like you're halfway home before you've even talked to this customer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're, yeah, you're already, you're already halfway there. Right. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's great. Like utilizing the data at the end, like let's, let's understand what we have at our disposal. Um, like, like your, your guys's roof measurements. Um, like if we've got that, man, let's utilize it. Yeah. Um, we like to say like having hail trace is like having a, team of meteorologists on staff you just don't have to put the payroll and taxes associated with that right like <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just need to be a member and a subscriber to our stuff and we we will our goal is to make sure that you're successful like we literally have a team of people that their entire goal is to make sure that our customers are are able to to get a good roi and, and able to, to to generate revenue so um it's there why not why not use it all the time and the most successful yeah. people are in that in that software using it all the time and i'm sure you guys see the same thing like the, the people who are having success are in there on a day-to-day -day basis and getting getting into the data so yeah and i mean i think that you know you touching on that existing customer database as being like this untapped resource because i do think you know traditionally the idea is you know i'm going to slap a roof on this house and move on and i'm never going to talk to that person again and that's not necessarily true. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of opportunity there. Like I always, speaking of telling stories, I always like to tell the story of the contractor that I worked with in a previous uh, life here that he, um, you know, it, it was genius when I saw how he was set up because what he would do is as part of his roof installation, he would sell that customer on a maintenance plan that was like quarterly checkups, yep. right? And he would roll it right into their price. So if they were financing a job, let's say, you know, it, it would pay for the maintenance plan along with the roof all as one package. And then they were covered and he would come out, he would send one of his texts out, you know, every uh, quarter, they would get up on the roof, do a full blown inspection and may come down and just say like, hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, your roof's in great shape, you know, since we replaced it, no problems. Uh, or, you know, he, maybe he finds something, maybe he finds hail damage, maybe he finds, you know, something else, some wind damage, you know, so you never know, but he, it kept him, like you said, it kept him in front of that customer. So it kept his name, you know, fresh in their mind. So if they did ever have a problem or if the neighbor asked, Hey, who'd put on your roof, they know, right. <laughs> they know exactly who put on the roof, right. It's not like you said, it's not six months down the road. And I already forgot who that guy was, you know, and I'm digging around trying to find his card. No, he's coming back next month to do his quarterly inspection. I can have him run over and do a quote on your roof. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's genius. It was genius. I was like, this no, is brilliant. Is, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I love that. I love that. Now, and I mean, the reality is like, if you don't remember who your roofer is, you're not going to look for the card. Like we have Google. Like, right. why are you <laughs> I'm just going to go to Google and, and search roofing. And yeah. I'm going to pull within my area, like a bunch of roofing contractors. They're going to all be rated and I'm just going to pick one. But right. If, you know, you've got a guy coming out every quarter. You're like, you're going to know he's out there. He's going to give you the report. He's going to tell you what's going on. And then like other things that happen is like your neighbors probably notice that too. Like, Hey, Jim, you got, you got a guy, something going on with your roof. I see a guy out here a few months ago. Right. <laughs> yesterday. Like what's going on? Oh man. Let me tell you, this guy, this guy's awesome. He comes out and checks our, make sure that our roof is okay. Um, once a quarter. So like four times a year, he's coming out and just making sure everything's fine. Oh really? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. You know, roof is one of the most important pieces of your most expensive asset. Like I yeah. want to make sure that I protect mine. Like you should do the same. Like, so the, the referral side of that is, is huge. Um, I think another thing that, that like I really am passionate about is like servicing, just servicing clients in general, taking care of your clients, like making sure that they know who you are and that they remember who you are. Um, we, we look at a lot of data in, inside of HailTrace, even outside of, even outside of, uh, of HailTrace. And, and one thing that we found is like, with, like just a subscription service. So something that you use all the time, like 50 to 70% of people who sign up for a new subscription, I, I could be, I could be wrong. It's been, a, it's been a long time. So I've looked at this exactly. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like 50 to 70% leave that subscription service within the first year. Right. So this is something you use every day, 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 30, 30 to 50%, I, I flipped those, 30 to 50% leave within the first year. Of those people who leave within the first year, 50 to 70% of those people leave within the first 90 days. Or have they have made up their they've made up their mind, sorry, they've made up their mind that they're leaving within within the first 90 days. So they're gonna leave within the first year, and more than likely over half of those are deciding within three months of signing up for your service. So that's something you use every day, something that you might not need, but every few years, like you're probably not going to use the same roofer unless you have an incentive to do that. That's, you know, the, like the, the, the maintenance program, you know, the, you know, the going out and making sure everything's okay. Once at once a quarter, um, doing a newsletter, um, you know, like there's a lot of things that you can do doing, you know, Facebook marketing to, to your, to your existing customers. Um, it's doing things while the job is going on. I, I think this would be so cool. And I, I'd love to, I'd love to know if anybody's ever started this. Um, I think it'd be cool. Like getting to know your customers, like sale, all sales is communication, right? Like we're just communicating with people where it's, it's person to person. Like those types of sales interactions are human to human. So like one thing that I think would be cool is like, if I'm, if I'm replacing pizza roof today, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions. Like what's your favorite, what's your favorite college football team? Mine? Yeah. Well, probably, yeah. The, probably the Gators. <laughs> the Florida Gators. Like, yeah. <laughs> man, that's awesome. Do you, how long have you been a Gators fan? Uh, probably 15 plus years at this point. Cool. You ever been to any games? Uh, yeah. yeah. Do your kids love the Gators? They do. Yeah. Wait, how many kids you got? Uh, I've got seven. <laughs> seven kids. That's a little yeah. but, but let's, we pause that interaction and I, I'm going to note that in my, in my data, Pete loves the Florida Gators. He's got seven kids who also love the Florida Gators. I think this would be so cool. I replace your roof. We go through that whole process. I make sure that that process is great because that, like, that's important, right? We want to make sure that we put, put a good product on. The build goes smoothly. We don't damage a bunch of plants and all that stuff um, that we're, you know, we're, we're managing that properly. But when it's done, I'm going to say, Hey Pete, I got you a matching roof to go with your house. I got you a Florida Gators hat and I got all seven of your kids, um, Gators hat. So I got, I got your, so we put a new hat on your roof or on your house. So I got you matching. <laughs> like, I, like I, that, it, yeah. I think that goes a long way. Like if my roofer were to give me a bunch of like, OU hats, <laughs> we're a big OU family. Like, sure. That that'd be huge. Like, oh man, even if you're not a hat guy, like you're you're thinking, oh man, that's really cool. Hat hat. What are hats? Like twenty bucks. Like that's not that's not a ton of money. And for some for some roofing contractors, I get it. That might be that might be uh, too much, especially if, if we're talking about you and your seven kids. Uh, <laughs> like maybe that wouldn't work in Utah, but like <laughs> that, that's not a huge cost, right? And like that, that goes a long way. So I'm, chances are, I'm probably going to remember that roofing contractor every time I put that hat on and every time my kid puts that hat on, like you involve the family, you, you like, you sell them on who you are before you sell them on what you do or what you sell. And like that, that speaks volumes for you. Like you care about them as a person. Another thing that would be cool. And this is something that I think all roofing country companies should do regardless of, of where they're at. If I replace your roof today on November 8, 2021, I don't care. There is no weather at all at your house the entirety of next year. I am sending you a roof birthday card on November 8th. Happy birthday to your roof. Thanks for letting us be your roofing contractor. We just wanted to say happy one year old birthday to your roof. Like that's, what is that like 60 cents like if you put right. a card you're probably talking like 40 50 cents a card like the, the postage stamp is 25 cents about maybe 35 um whatever that is like you're spending under a dollar per customer right like that but that could go a long way like i'm not asking you for anything i'm literally just telling you thank you and in a creative way happy birthday to your roof like there's there's a there's a lot of different things that yeah. you can do <laughs> to make sure that you're 
like taking care of your customers and, and making sure that they are known and that, that you know who they are so they know who you are or they remember who you are. Well, it's like you said earlier, I think it, there's a shift, right? And we have to have this mindset shift. You know, like I worked prior to coming into this industry, I worked as a GC and on the GC side, like when you do a job for a customer, you essentially try to establish yourself as that customer's GC for life. Yeah. Like if they go later and buy another house or maybe you did their bathroom and now they want to remodel their kitchen or they want to finish their basement, like they're calling you, right? Like you want to be yeah. their go-to person for any project they're going to do on their house ever again. Right. And I think we've gone the opposite direction in roofing where we're just like, let's just get it done and move on to the next customer. And we're losing sight of the fact that this is a successful model in almost every other industry is become that customer's, you know, go-to person for their lifetime. You know, yeah. you don't, you know, you never know. I mean, they may sell that house, but because you put the roof on it, because you've stayed in touch, you may be able to easily get in touch with the next buyer or, you know, of that home and be able to become their roofer. Right. And so you just establish this relationship with that property, you know, that could last a lifetime. And like you said, then you just keep feeding off of it as opposed to just having to start fresh every year and go, you know, from scratch and be like, okay, now we got to go, you know, to a new area and try to dig up some new leads, you know, and start all over trying to build a book of business. When yeah. you have a book of business, it's there. Yeah. Right? Was, just stay established in it. You know, I think there's a lot of turnover in our, in our industry, right? And I would, I would, I would be willing to bet that that is part of the turnover is that constant year after year starting over and start you do that five years it's like oh man i, I gotta do this again i gotta i gotta start from scratch again and we just make it complicated and that, that wheel just gets harder to turn every year and then you're like you know what i could go i could be, go do something else and make you know almost as much or not as much stress and like I, i'd be willing to bet that that's probably part of some of the turnover and that like, what we're talking about is just on the residential side like that's not right. even, I'm not commercial, like commercial, like, man, in the off season right now, we should be, we should be gathering our, our list of big fish. Like what, what commercial buildings do we want? Like if we had our, if we had our pick of commercial buildings in 2022, what would those be? What would our top 10 be in our area? Let's, let's drive around. Let's figure that out. Like I want that huge Walmart right off the highway. I want that. If, if that roof gets needs to be replaced, I want to be the one to do it. Okay. Well, now we, now we know where we want to go. How do we get there? And we can start to understand like, or start to do some research on who we need to talk to. I'm sure Walmart is a huge entity and there's a lot of red tape to go through to, to sure. deal with those people. But like we could start to do some of that, those, that research. If we don't know, if we don't know where we're going, we certainly aren't going to be able to determine how we're going to get there. So that's a huge start. I think another thing that we've seen in commercial, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm just, feeling really, really passionate about this. So I'm just like talking. <laughs> something I'm going. <laughs> There's I love not it. people that want to hear me talk. Uh, <laughs> but like we, we have some customers that uh, they'll go do commercial properties. And one thing that we found that, that's helped them be successful is, you know, rather than going and looking at, at that commercial job and trying to sell that commercial job is people who own commercial businesses, a lot of the times they own more than one property, right? So if we do a little bit of digging, if Pete owns a, if Pete owns a strip mall, if you own a strip mall, and I'm and I'm and I'm coming out to inspect one of your properties, sure, I'm gonna find information on that property, but I'm gonna see if you own any other properties. Maybe you own three or four other, you know, strip malls that, that are that are very successful for you. Um, I'm gonna go find out all the weather data on those. And we have we have a customer who was able to do that, and he was able to get a bunch of commercial properties because he went into this meeting about a specific property. And he took information from the other commercial properties that that guy had in the area and was able to keep, he, he signed the deal that day because he, he presented uh, solutions for the, the guy's entire portfolio. Like, hmm. so for me, that's a, that's a mindset shift too. Of like, okay, it's not about the address. It's about the whole portfolio. If you yeah. want a commercial property, like I want to make sure that I know every commercial property that you own so I can give you, so I can facilitate the best solutions for you, which is it's not just that building. And he, he, he went in after a roofer who presented on that specific building, he went and said, Hey, we need to do some of this building right now, but you've got three other properties that we should probably inspect that are pretty urgently. Looks like they've had some recent hail. Then you've got like four or five other ones that we, we want to get on 
because it'd probably just be good if they've not been inspected in a few years we should probably just you know go over there and take a look we've got this one we want to get on as soon as possible and these other three or four that we should probably do something within the next few weeks to yeah. make sure that you're not you're not going to be just bleeding money down the road trying to fix this or trying to keep this thing from becoming a huge headache and let's not put band-aids on it. let's take a look at what needs to be done now so you're not out you know, in some cases, millions of dollars for some of those. I mean, we're talking about huge commercial properties. Like, the reality is, like, those are those are cost a lot to maintain. That's a lot. That's a completely different animal than a, than a, like a home, right? So, having that type of information, like, it can go a long way. Um, if you own seven businesses, like, that's probably worth a dinner. Like, hey, I'd love to have a dinner and let let's talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't wait until commercial properties hit. Let's do some research now. Find out your big fish and then start to figure out who we need to talk to to get on those routes. You could do an inspection today. And right. then if you're their guy, because like you were saying, everybody wants to have a guy like for something. Like if I, <laughs> if, if my car breaks down, like I have a guy. Like, right. I, I <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And why why isn't it the same for roofing? Like if I own seven commercial properties, do I want to mess with the headache of trying to figure out somebody to come out and do that commercial property? Or do I want do I want a roofing contractor that's gonna text me and say, Hey, looks like looks like your property at this address got impacted by hail last night. I'll be there at nine. Will you be there or not? Like no, yeah. No. <laughs> Imagine. I'll, I'll even pay a little extra for that. Like Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, there, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. And I, and I think like we were talking about, it, it is a mindset shift in, in some cases. So there's a lot of companies out there. I don't want, I don't want people to think like our, the roofing industry or the restoration industry is like doing it wrong. There are a lot of companies out there that, that have this and like, we're, we're not coming up with all these ideas. Some of these we've right. thought about, oh, it's like, we've got customers who are doing that. It's like, man, that's a really good model. Other people right. should do that too. So I, I, we're just really passionate about helping people be successful and growing and scaling their business and having process in place is the way to do that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we're the same here, you know, and, it, and like you said, it's not reinventing the wheel. Like we're not coming up with some secret idea here. Like there's companies out there doing this stuff successfully every day. Yeah. You know, we're just kind of giving you some insight here to say like, Hey, you know, here's some ideas you could try, you know, rather than being the guy that says, oh, season's over, I'm going to go, you know, fishing and sit on the couch. You know, this is what the other guy is doing that's working 365 days a year or at least prepping to get ready to go the minute he can, you know, so. Well, I'll never forget. Um, I came to Hail Trace in 2016 and there was there was only seven of us when I got here. We're, we're, we're at uh, almost 30 people now. We've, we've grown quite a bit, which is which is fun. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but I'll never forget like trying to get some renewals, um, and calling some people to, you know, try to drum up some business in the, in the off season. Um, and I think it was October, mid October, I called a guy and I got his voicemail and his voicemail said something to the effect of, Hey, this is such and such with such and such roofing company. Um, we're closed between, and it was like October 1st through like February 20th. <laughs> um, if it's urgent, like call such and such with such and such roofing company. And if not leave a message, we'll call you back in February. And I'm thinking like, what? Come on, like literally just giving business to somebody else. If that's your friend, right. like you're giving, you're, you're telling people to call a different roofing company. <laughs> you're just closed. And it's not like this is someplace like Alaska. Right. Um, <laughs> like Midwest, it was like, man, you're losing out on a ton of opportunity right now. Right. <laughs> people are like, I'm, I'm going I'm to be gone. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're exactly. Just from October to February. So, like, man, that was, that was my kind of my first introduction into the, like, how the seasonality of, of, uh, of stuff works. And, you know, we've had to figure that out too. Like, you know, we've had to figure out how, how can we be useful to people 365 days a year? Because it's sure. easy to say, like, hey, you can use us 365 days a year. But if we can't incentivize that, like, like what's stopping people from just saying, yeah, I just need you from March to April. So right. <laughs> good job of that. But like we, we've even had to, had to fight some of that. It's like, yeah, sure. March, April, May, we're doing great. October, November. Oh man. <laughs> what do we do? So like, you, right. There's lots of stuff that you can do though. 
to generate opportunities. Like, and that's Absolutely. what it's like. If you're not generating opportunities, you're not filling your funnel, like you're not going to make any money. So right. yeah. uh, even if those opportunities don't, don't pay you in October, like you're still filling your funnel and you may double what you did last March because of what you're doing right now, filling your funnel in October, November, like, yeah. Laying that groundwork. Laying yeah. the groundwork. Absolutely. Like <laughs> maybe ships are one in the off season. Like every, That's right. <laughs> yeah, like let's go, let's win some championships right now. Let's I love do, it. Do the weightlifting. Let's, let's get in. <laughs> That's right. Let's hit the gym now. Right. No, no, I really appreciate it, Matt. Uh, you know, I really appreciate, appreciate the insight. I think some really great stuff, uh, here today, you know, some great ideas uh, of how we can maximize the use of the off season, right. <laughs> and make it so it really isn't an off season, right? Like let's, yeah. let's change the game a little bit here. And, and I really like that. What you said, like there shouldn't really be an off season, you know, like we should be doing this. 365 days a year, even if we're not necessarily on the roof, you know, that doesn't mean we're not working towards getting on the roof. So, uh, you know, I love all the insight. I think, like you said, you and I could probably talk about this all day, but, uh, you know, I think some great information here and I really appreciate you jumping on with us and, uh, you know, look forward to, uh, a, another big storm season next year, maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing our predictions um, towards the beginning of next year. We do we do a season prediction, a forecast every year that Derek does at some at some big trade shows, and um, our our meteorologists will start working on that um, here pretty soon. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We we love to 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 look back and see how our predictions have have played out, and we love to to predict where we how we think the hail season is going to play out, or the, the severe weather season if you include wind in that as well. Um, the last thing I want to give you is, is this year in the United States, we've had almost 5 million houses. This is not an exact number, but our, our estimates are, are just under 5 million homes have been impacted by hail. Um, that's incredible. At some point this year. So like, there's plenty of stuff to do. Um, yeah. that's, you know, that's, and I'm sure you guys hear that too. Like there, well, there's nothing to do. Like there's no, you know, there's no roofs to get on. I was like, man. There's like thousands of roofers just in Dallas. Like there's plenty of roof, plenty of roofs to go around for all of those guys. Like if you're in a yeah. place in Oklahoma City or you know, Kansas City or you know, Denver, Colorado Springs, like you name it, like, like there's probably work for you to do unless unless you're literally in Alaska where the, you don't get hail, like <laughs> there's probably stuff for you to do. So Well, know. and it's like you said, like how many how many of those five million homes that were impacted have been completely overlooked maybe because of the severity of the storm or the size of the hail or the fact that no one even knows they were impacted. Yeah. Right? So, you know, there's still the a lot of untapped resources there. You know? Yeah. Like, like we were saying, like if, if I, if I get a hailstorm in my area and it's a good, it's a good significant storm, like I'm probably going to work that. I might miss a couple storms in, in my area that weren't that big, weren't that big of storms that I don't even think about. Like, can we take advantage of that? Probably. There's probably, it's at least worth a look it's at least worth worth like the 30 seconds to a minute to, to get on the computer and, and look it up. Obviously oh, according, data. according to your, you know, your, your internet speed, um, 30 seconds to a minute, probably, probably a pretty good <laughs> time. <estimate. laughs> How long it's going to take you to figure that out. So with, with that short amount of time, like we can figure out if this is even worth looking at. So there's, right. there's no excuse. There's no excuse to not be no. <laughs> generating some stuff right now. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for jumping on with us today, uh, you know, and getting on on here with me and, and chatting. Uh, always fun to chat. And like I said, we could talk forever probably. So <laughs> we'll definitely have to do this again. Yeah, Pete, thank you so much for having me. We, lo we love you guys over there at Roofer and you guys are doing some awesome stuff. And so we're just excited to see um, what you guys continue to do and, and look forward to, to the future stuff as well. So thanks. Thanks for having us on. All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Appreciate it.